Good day, my name is Ismail Aragorn in the Central, and I will be presenting a multi-criteria ratings methodology for the suitability evaluation of open peer sites. I would also like to acknowledge my co-authors, Eric C. Cruz and Edgardo P. Casillo II. All three of us work for AMH Philippines Incorporated, a Filipino civil engineering consultancy firm, while Eric Cruz is also a professor at the University of the Philippines Diliman. This is based on a project we had done last year. However, due to constraints, we cannot yet show the exact details of the location of the project. So for a quick outline, I will be discussing the background, the objectives, the marine trestle length, the prevailing wave maps, socket elevation and design wave height, the final pier sighting suitability matrix, and finally, the conclusions. For a quick background, the project called for an open pier for cargo vessels to be optimally sighted along a 6 km long coastline, which is partially sheltered against waves. Several reaches of the coastline are covered with fully grown mangroves, approximately 80% of the total shoreline, while some are close to channel outfalls that may cause flooding issues and debris stagnation zones which may cause environmental or operational hazards when the pier is fully operational. Local laws do not allow for clearing of mangroves, severely limiting the developable area for the pier. As such, while the siting is mainly governed by the requirement of wave tranquility, other coastal engineering and operational considerations are important to the project owners. Based on the topographic survey and the field survey by our team over the entire coastline, five potential areas with sufficient space and clearance from the existing mangroves were determined. These locations were spread along the entire six kilometer of the coastline. The application of an objective ratings-based approach was implemented to determine the optimal location based on the coastal engineering and non-coastal considerations. Presented here are the first three coastal engineering parameters used on the pier sighting suitability matrix. First is the marine trestle length, which is primarily a function of the vessel draft requirements. Second, the maximum vertical distance of the seabed, which is essentially the overall depth of the marine pile from the mean tide level to the seabed elevation. Third is the soffit elevation requirement which is the recommended minimum elevation of the deck soffits based on the sum of the freeboard and the highest combined storm wave run-up and storm tide level from the simulated critical typhoons. Fourth is the design wave height, which is simply the highest significant wave height calculated from the simulation of the critical typhoons, which will be used for the sizing and design of the marine piles. Fifth is the dredging requirement, which is an approximate area that will have to be dredged to ensure safe navigability along the bursting alignment and turning basin of the vessel. Last is the landing alignment, which is selected as being ideally on the direction of the prevailing wave approach or wave optimal to reduce the transferred wave load from the vessel onto the fenders, but could also sometimes be not aligned with the wave approach to compensate the longer pile depths due to the bathymetry. So first, the considerations for the marine trestle length. The maximum design vessel envisioned is a Panamax-like vessel with a draft of around 12 meters, resulting in a required undercute clearance of 1.2 meters. Considering the tidal variation of mean tide level to the mean lower low of 0.57 meters, this results in a minimum required draft of 13.81 from the mean tide level. For the study, this was rounded up to 14 meters to ensure safety of the vessel. For the turning basin, it was determined a 590 diameter basin would be required for the designed vessel with a LOA of 295 meters. Applying the previous draft and turning basin requirements, the sample results for Site 1A so the marine trestle length would need to be 490 meters long to reach the 14 meter draft requirement. Assuming a wave optimal approach, 
which will be discussed further later on, it can be tilted to be aligned along the southeast direction. However, it should be noted that because of the southeast alignment, the maximum pile length would be at least 25 meters in depth. As an alternative, we have what we call the depth optimal alignment, where the berthing area is parallel to the 14 meter depth contour. However, a potential navigational hazard was noted within the turning basin, which may require additional dredging. These are just additional samples for site 3, where we have a relatively shorter trestle at 385, and site 4 with actually the shortest trestle length of only 215 meters because of the change in bathymetry. Site 5, we again have a slightly longer trestle requirement of 240 meters. We also analyze the prevailing wave conditions of all sites based on the windrows and available fetch for each location. This is a sample for site 1A showing the critical prevailing wave of condition approaching the site from the southeast. Aligning the berthing area to be along the southeast would result in the wave optimal alignment, wherein a smaller area of the vessel will be exposed to incoming waves, resulting in less transferred load to the pier. For the depth optimal alignment, on the other hand, the prevailing wave direction will hit more transversely across the vessel, inducing a higher transferred load to the fenders and pier. Now for a quick discussion on the soffit elevation and design wave height. To determine the potentially critical typhoons, a 200 km search radius was placed around the project location. After which, seven potentially critical typhoons were selected based on their wind velocity, pressure, and distance to the site. To help illustrate the terminology, the minimum soffit is the sum of the amplitude of the storm wave and the storm tide level. This is to minimize wave index forces that would significantly increase the loads that the pier must be able to withstand, and also to minimize potential damage to any heavy machinery that may be placed on top of the deck, such as unloaders and other gantry cranes. For the typhoon simulation, a regional model of the entire Philippine archipelago extending into the West Philippine Sea and the Pacific Ocean was used. A separate local model, not shown here, was also created to simulate the localized coastal processes within the vicinity of the site. All simulations were done using DHI's MIC-21, FMHD, and SW modules. These are just sample results of the typhoon simulations, showing the pairing of the maximum storm tide and the corresponding wave runup, versus the maximum wave runup and the corresponding storm tide. The idea behind checking these is the maximum storm tide and the maximum storm wave may not always occur at the same time. So this just shows some additional sample results for site 2A, where the exposure is slightly different. To summarize all sites, we found that the 1987 typhoon Betty, or local name Herming, produced the highest soffit elevation requirement, ranging from 5.1 to 5.4, depending on the location. Now, all of this was input into the previously discussed peer sighting suitability matrix. Each peer alignment was rated from 1 to 10 based on the suitability to the corresponding criteria, with 1 being the most suitable. Weights are given to each parameter based on the consultant's engineering judgment. A higher weight signifies a more critical factor for sighting. One matrix was created for coastal engineering considerations, while another for operational or non-coastal engineering considerations.
summary of the characteristics of all sites are presented herein. The different values and parameters do not easily lead to a conclusion on the most viable location. To assess this, the scores and corresponding weights per parameter per site are shown. These were based on equations set and agreed upon with the proponent, with a lower score indicating a better site characteristic. Analyzing the final score, we find that for the coastal engineering parameters, Site 5 is the most optimal location. However, as mentioned before, non-coastal engineering considerations were also accounted for to include operational or site development concerns. Specifically, the inland topography, proximity to existing roads, area for port development, and other concerns. Similarly to the coastal engineering considerations, higher or lower values were ascertained depending on whether it was advantageous or disadvantageous. For the data, which, again, based on the equation to create upon with the client, scores were applied. The resulting scores and weights are shown here per parameter for the non-coastal considerations. Summarizing the non-coastal considerations, it comes out that Site 3 is actually the most optimal location. However, consolidating the scores, we find that Site 4 is actually the best balance between the coastal and non-coastal engineering parameters. I cannot disclose the location of the project, but based on satellite imagery, we have found that this was indeed the final location selected by the proponent. Conclusions The multi-criteria ratings with generally objective weighting factors identified a clear optimal peer site based on both technical and operational considerations. The application of such a multi-criteria decision matrix may be applied to future shorelines to ensure the most technically feasible and potentially economically viable location for peer development to be chosen. As it is a multi-criteria approach, criteria may be added or removed as needed, depending on the characteristics of the site and the requirements of the proponent. Special acknowledgement, the authors would like to recognize the assistance provided by engineer Ben Jetro and Vangelista for his assistance in the preparation of the original figures and calculations presented herein. Have a good day.